The Jiyun Mullis G200 Lite. And oh boy, is this different. We look right here. Both these halves here, this is the G200. We have the power supply down here. We have this proprietary power cable, DC cable, and we have the light head. This is it. This is a light head that is nominally 200 watts, goes up to nearly 300 watts when in boost mode, which is wild. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get into the categories, starting with the build quality. Now on the outside here, I was thinking that this looked very plasticky. I was wrong. These bars in front of the fan, these are actually metal. This part here is plastic. These red screws aren't actually decorative. They hold this together. We have plastic on the sides here. This part's especially squishy. I thought the mount was metal, but then I took the whole thing apart and this is actually just kind of a very rugged plastic. I don't know what the failure rate on this is specifically. And when I took it apart, unfortunately, I discovered in the front here that two of my wires were pinched a little bit. I had to loosen them up and put it back together. That might have caused some premature failure had I kept using this light. Now, I have used this light a lot. This has probably spent over 100 hours on. I've used it at events. I have used it for videos. And so we've got a plastic exterior. We have a very rigid metal subframe. Now, where this mounts to the metal subframe is a fairly thin section that kind of surprised me. So I, I do worry how much tension is on these screws. Now, my biggest concern with the build quality here is this. There is a wire that is fully proprietary and plugs in permanently to the top of the power supply and jacks into this. So we have a proprietary connection here. We have a wire that doesn't come off here. I can kind of foresee this as being a problem later on down the line, and that is unfortunate. And just to be sure what we're looking at, I took apart the power supply module, and this wire doesn't have any easy disconnect. It is soldered to the main board. And also of note, the power supply module is much more difficult to service than the light head. And although it looks very thin and possibly flimsy, the articulating arm is made of solid metal, looks very rigid. This here, very plasticky, that will scratch eventually. Overall, better than I expected, not perfect, I'm gonna give that an 8 out of 10 for build quality. Although Zhiyun sent me this light for testing, they did not sponsor this video. This video is brought to you by Dossier, and for our light quality section, you can feast your eyes on some b-roll taken using the G200. Dossier is a high value, just like a lot of the products that I show you here, scent manufacturer that cuts out the middleman, cuts out the advertising, cuts out the fancy bottles, however... Uh, magnets, I love magnets. <laughs> it lets you customize your scent profile, and it also lets me have someone working with our channel that doesn't compromise me. It's not a camera manufacturer, it's not a light manufacturer, but it is something that I use a lot. I might have a problem. I have a lot of scents in my life. I try not to go overboard on this, but you're working a wedding day, you're working an event, you're in hot, tight spaces with lots of people, you don't want to stink up the room. I've had lots of circumstances where I've been working with people after a long day, they get close to me and they're like, ha, huh, you still smell good. Awesome. And it's, it's actually kind of crazy how much people appreciate that. <laughs> you don't want to be stuck spending a 10, 12 hour wedding day with someone who smells awful. That's something that's always hanging out my bag is a scent. Now, from the big manufacturers, you're looking at one or two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars for designer scent. Dossier has tons of options. You can pick and choose, use whatever you want, and they're fifty bucks a bottle, forty-nine dollars. So, if you want to check out Dossier, there's a link down in the description, which will help support this channel and feed my fat cats. Light quality: we have a CRI 95, TLCI 97. RG 101. So we have very good skin tones, very good light. It's pretty much at or near the top of the market. Has the latest COB LED technology going on here. And you had a Bowens mount that will allow you to modify it in any way you see fit. That's a 9.5 out of 10 as well for light quality. Feature set. And honestly, the main feature that this has is a feature that nothing else has. It's this ridiculously compact size. So you can put this on the back of something or not and fit this in a space 
that no other light could do before at this level of power output. It's crazy. And they do that in two ways. Number one, they're using the direct cooling method that was introduced with this, the X100. Now this one continues to be the most impressive because this is the entire thing. Now there's an external power brick, but this is over 100 watts of power and that's it. So the fan blows straight through everything. Whereas this one here, they split it up. It's more than twice as thick. I'm a little disappointed, but you know, this isn't science fiction here. And that split has allowed it to be in more places and do more things than anything else before it. Much like a Sony Venice with the remote head, you can take everything that you don't need and move it somewhere else. The advantage of that for this is, number one, you don't have all the weight on the top, and number two, if you're not using the app, you're using the control box, this is further down on the light stand, it's easier to access. This is a bi-colored light, we have Bluetooth and app control, unfortunately, mine is an early unit that again doesn't have a Bluetooth chip in it. Drives me crazy, I wish they stopped doing that. <laughs> The G60 that they sent me a while back also doesn't have app control. This one's kind of half-baked too. Full production model ones, just fine. Not the ones that I get. Now, this doesn't have a bunch of effects and stuff that I could tell. So that's not what they're going for with this light. It's something other than that. So for features, that's going to be a 7 out of 10. It has a feature that nothing else has, but it also doesn't have every feature imaginable. Usability. There are ups and downs for this. But mainly, it has a usability feature that nothing else has. I love how we have this nice big elastic loop to attach this to a light stand. It's also removable. This is modular. Modularity has its ups and downs for usability. There's no power brick after this, it's just AC power cable. As far as noise output goes, in regular mode we're looking at 41 decibels, which is a little bit loud. But if we go to boost mode, it goes up to 47 decibels, which is clearly audible. So if you want that extra power, you're going to be paying for it with sound. For temperatures, in standard mode, the power supply gets up to 39 degrees Celsius, the body, 43 degrees Celsius. In boost mode, the power supply doesn't seem to care that much, because it's up here that all the heat is going. This gets up to 50 degrees Celsius, which is a little hot, but not terrible. And if we look at the power curves on this, it's obviously giving you all the power that it can produce and not making any sacrifices. So in regular mode, we're pretty close to 200 watts on all the output levels. But if we hold down two buttons and kick it into boost mode, at 2700K, it's 228 watts. At 6500K, it's 246 watts, still not that high. But at 5600K, it's 285 watts. And at its max output, which is at 4400K, we are over 300 watts. For comparison, this is a normal 300 watt light. This is generally considered to be a compact 300 watt light. But it's way bigger than that. So they still have really pushed what is possible in this form factor. We have the quick steps on the button, which is nice. I appreciate that. We'll go up to 1%. See, the fan isn't even on if it doesn't need to be, so it is a very smart fan. It's nice having the screen down further on the pole. That makes it easier, but the screen is so small for a light of this class. It's the same screen from this, which is a much smaller light with smaller light output. I would have liked a bigger screen. Now, obviously, there's not a lot of room on this body, but you've got to get pretty close to it to see what's going on. This is a tough one. I don't like how it jingle jangles in my bag, and I don't feel as comfortable just jamming it in there as I do with, say, this bad boy right here. But it can do things nothing else can do. I'm going to give that a 9 out of 10. Value. June products generally give you a pretty good bang for your buck. Let's see how this one stacks up. This one, the G200, is $380. Let's compare it to other 200 watt lights. The Cobor 220, CL220, which is what we're using right here, $300. That is less. Amaran 200XS, $350, much closer. Uh, Lightmons LA200 by $350, small rig RC220 by $260, I've got some of those back there, but you don't need to see them. Nanlite FS200B, $350, so everything except for the cold bore tends to sit around $350, $350, $370. This one here, the there's a 200 watt version of this, SD200B is $240 but this one is 390 for 300 watts, and honestly, this sits kind of between the two for output. 
then you, you know you, you can go higher up the market to the no lead 200 by for 780 or an aperture ls 300 x for a thousand dollars but overall it's a good value but not the best value so i'm going to give that an 8 out of 10. This is a total score of 41.5 out of 50, or 83%. It's a strong score, not a perfect score. I think because this is such a niche device. If you have a use case for this, you probably already know, and you saw the specs, you saw the build of this, and you were like, that, right there, I need that. I need to jam a tremendous amount of light power into this small space. And boom, this has fixed all my life's problems. Okay, maybe not all of them. I know that there are a lot of people out there who have had a particular issue with trying to get light where they can't get light, and this will get it there, which is phenomenal. I just wish that A, this cable was replaceable, if not, not even proprietary, and that this screen was a little bit better and that you had a better interface on it. So it's both stripped down and hyper advanced, but I appreciate Jiyun once again for pushing the envelope and doing something daring and totally different. Love it. And these are first generation products. So next time around, these are gonna be even cooler, which is crazy. <laughs> if you have any thoughts about this crazy new Jiyun light, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. If you have any questions, again, let me know. So until next time, Let's go take some photos. Photos? Photos? Video. Get out of here. <laughs>